Hey. So this talk's going to be a fuck of a lot shorter. Uh, the, uh, um, so, so the people mistakenly thought that this talk was about virtual env. It is not about virtual env itself. I actually somewhat assume that you probably know what virtual env is. Brief explanation, it's basically a little environment in which you end up having things. The, pro the thing that I want to talk about is if you are writing a web application or any application where you want people to get up and get started, how can you make it not a nightmare for them to get up and get started? And I think the way that people tend to do things actually encourages the nightmarish aspect. If you're going to like JRandom Project, right, you might, you probably, the instructions are probably something like this. All right, you'd be like, okay, git clone my thing, git clone, and it'll, we'll just pretend that it's M MKDIR, foobar, right? And then you're like, change to foobar, and then you're like, and then do the, and if it was in C, it would just be this, configure, and, and, make. And as long as everything works and you prayed to the right gods, it'll be done, right? It's not going to work here because it's not a C project. It's not even a project. But that's basically the thing. It's enough to get somebody up and running as long as all, they have all the prerequisites installed and everything to just get going, right? But what happens if you're writing like a Python application and you're like, hey, I love contributors. In Media Goblin, we love contributors. You're like, you're like, I want you to get up and running, and let's get up and running. I've got this application. Let's install it. Let's go. We'll have a great time, right? So the first thing you tell people is like, all right, all right you got to install your virtual env, right? You got to install the virtual env. You try to explain what it is. You've, it's this thing. It like gives you some things. You're like, actually, you probably want to install virtual env wrapper, right? So install the virtual env wrapper. Okay, they've got the virtual env wrapper. Okay, you got to source it. Make sure you source the thing. You probably want to put it in your bash RC so that it sources right or something like that. Definitely source it. Person's like, okay, I think I kind of know what's going on here. In fact, I don't even use virtual env wrapper. I use my own bash script. So this is actually going to make this talk a bit goofy. But uh, um, the, but but you're like, okay, okay. So just you know, and pretend this is work on instead of venture because I'm using old scripts I wrote when I worked at Imagining Landscape. So like. Uh, and you're like, you're like, okay, now you've entered the, virt uh, the, you've entered the virtual env. Like, you create the virtual env. Your user's like, okay, I think I created the virtual env. You're like, did you set it up right? Did you set up the right parameters? They're like, I hope I set it up with the right parameters. I think I passed in the right thing to, to keep or not keep the system site packages. They're like, okay, great, great, great. You know, now you've got this virtual env. Now look inside the virtual env. You'll see there's a bin, include, a lib, or whatever. whatever. You're going to either tell them to like install some sort of packages thing. Like, install these pit packages thing. And they run the pit packages. It probably breaks because that's my experience with pit. But uh, um, the, um, it, you know, the, um, it, or, or what you might tell somebody is like, okay, the virtual one is basically this little environment. It's a little pond. It's a little Zen garden in which you get in there and you put some stuff and then you'll work on it. So like, we'll go in here. We'll go into this and then we're going to like do the git clone here. So you do the git clone already at this step. And for now, we'll just pretend that uh, we'll just clone off of my vel. Media Goblin instance or something like that, or actually high. That's going to be way a lot faster. So anyway, cl clones off of high, and it's like, okay, done. Like you're like, okay, the next thing you got to do is like make sure it's actually in there. Do something like, and either if they install it through pip, maybe it's already there, or you're like Python set up that pi develop. Like that'll set everything right up, you know. And maybe it works, and maybe it doesn't. Um, and at this point, you're like, if it doesn't work, you can just install, like, go to lib slash python slash site packages slash easy install the PTI, just this tax file. You can go and edit it. And the person's like, okay, I think I know what's going on here. I think I got this. And then, like, you know, at this point, like, and you're like, okay, now CD back two directories. Because the commands you're running, first of all, you have to make sure you source the bash script. And the commands you're running are actually not in this directory, they're actually back two directories in the bin directory. Look in the bin directory, that's where your commands are, and they're like, okay, I think I know what's going on here. At this point, you've totally fucking confused the person. What the fuck is going on? With C, it was so easy, it was just configure and make, and the world was done, everything was done, everything was great. We have a way easier way in Media Goblet. It's so fucking simple. Put the virtual env inside the package. Inside the package. It's so great. Here's what you do. You've got, like, let's look at the Media Goblin config thing. It's just like, so we have them install the packages. If you're running on Debian or something not terrible like OSX, it's probably one line. Um, uh, but if you're, and if you're doing the other thing, <laughs> OSX is fucking terrible, I'm sorry. If you're doing anything else, you know, you've got virtual env right here. You've got basically two commands. You sit cd to the directory, you copy and paste this command. We actually used to have this and 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 somebody changed the wiki. But it was one command you could just run all at once. You just run this, which sets up the virtual env in the package. See? Devel Media Goblin. Virtual env, this command. 
And this command, the reason why it has the or in it is so that because we need system site packages, it depends on what your thing is, but we could just pretend that it's virtual env. That's it, right? What? Are those correct? No, yes, they are virtual. <laughs> so all you need to do is basically tell them to do virtual env dot, right? And then it installs the thing, right? You're totally done, right? The next step, and this is it. Though I'm actually going to do it like this because I want system head packages. The next step that we have is just one more step bin slash python setup.py develop. And that's it. Inside the package, you have them install the virtual env inside the package. And what's great about this is they don't have this garden where they go off to the src directory, they move over there, they check the thing out, they put it in there, they move it over to the easiest install stat.pth or something like that. It's just all in the fucking directory. It's in the directory. It's like a one command that you paste. And then, what's really great, in the C world, you did configure and make like this. And then after you ran that, you had like run game, right? You just hit that, and you've already got your program. Same thing here. We've just got slash bin slash gmg shell. It takes a minute to start up, because you know, we've got a bunch of stuff. That's it. That's all it was. And it's super simple, because when you end up giving a, somebody who's new to Python or new to something else, and you try to teach them how to use a virtual env, that's super confusing. You're teaching them Python packaging before they're doing anything else. Media Goblin has tons of uh, contributors who are new to Python or don't even know how Python works because they might be graphic designers or other types of people. People who have no fucking idea on how Python packaging works. We just dot git ignore all the common virtual env directories and just let them install it inside the package. Done. If they want to do something in sort of the design garden of virtual env, they can do it that way. But this way, you don't have to know shit about how Python packaging works. And it's much better for your contributors. That's the end of my talk. Thank you, everybody. Questions? How much bigger does it end up being than the other one? It's the same size. Just the same thing. It just puts a direct, It just puts the little directories inside of the same thing, and you just dot get ignore them, and then you just say if you're a developer and using this, then it's just not. Yeah, that's it. Repeat the question. I have a long question. How do you package up uh, media resources? How do we package up media resources? Uh, the well in Media Goblin. That's that's a. Uh, um, let me see here. Well, that's, that's kind of a separate question. I mean, for Media Goblin, we have, uh, um, we have a, um, what we do is we've got, uh, um, if you're, when you're creating the Python egg, if they want to start, install it off of Pippi, there's actually a way to, uh, um, to, to tell Python, I forget which file it is. It's, yeah, it's a manifest, the manifest file. And you basically say which files it'll include. And the way that we serve them, since we're serving it through paste, um, I don't know, we just check all those resources into the repository. And, uh, um, and then since we're using paste as a server, um, we just have it serve the files. Um, I, I, I don't know if I'm totally missed, if that's it. Okay, that's it, yeah. Awesome. Anybody else? Any questions? All right, thanks guys, thanks. Yeah.